I'm Ryan Gifford, and this is Gifford Fabrication. Hi, my name is Ryan. Welcome to my shop. Uh, this video today is going to be about the assembly and implementation of the grit automation uh, blast gates, machine triggers, and manual triggers. Um, grit automation is a company that I found online um, during a Facebook search, probably looking through uh, woodworking groups and kind of a little known company at this point. They're still small, but they produce a, um, a mesh network blast gate control system or actually shop control system. Um, it's, it's really, really an interesting product. Um, I did a video previously on the unboxing of this product and talked a lot more about it and kind of where they came from. And I'll put a uh, link in the description below if you want to watch that video as well. But Today's video is about the actual buildup and the implementation of this product into my uh, dust collection system in my shop and kind of shows how it's set up, how it goes together, how it works. It, it is a smart system, so there is a, a little bit of uh, technology involved in it for sure. In fact, there's a lot of technology involved with it, but um, the folks at Grit have done a great job in not making that technology overwhelming. So. Uh, without talking too much more about it, let's get into the build and um, show you this product. So I lay down all the parts and pieces across the shop. Here's all the two and a half blast gates, the parts for them for assembly, the connectors. Uh, here's the larger four inch blast gates. There's the controller for the hub and for the dust collector, the wire. There's the air quality. Um, sensor for the filter and then I laid out my triggers both manual and machine triggers basically just all over the shop so that I would know kind of where I wanted to put them and what my plan was for these going forward um, it was good pre-planning to get in position to move forward so the first step is to build up the blast gates this is the uh, blast gate adapter that allows the servo to control the blast gate um, grit sends a template to drill out the handles of the aluminum blast gates. So we line up that template in the middle of the blast gate, drill it out, it's pretty easy. They provide the drill bit, the correct size. Um, and then we can assemble the gate itself. So I started by taking off this pivot point. It's just a nylox nut. And then there's the pivot arm. Um, slide this over the blast gate handle, line up the hole, and then there's a three millimeter screw that gets tightened down so it doesn't move. From there, uh, you have to actuate the blast gate handle to fit over the top of the pin um, before you assemble it, otherwise it won't fit properly. And then you just line up the slots on the side of the servo body um, assembly with the two screws that you removed out of the blast gate itself. Pretty easy. Grit sends replacement screws with it. Um, those screws fit in uh, easily and then you tighten everything down. Uh, the, the servo body has uh, an adjustable slot uh, cut into it that allows for the four and six inch blast gates. This two and a half inch blast gate uh, only has one hole um, you'll see here in a second when I put the second screw in, uh, I had to move that to get access to that, that screw hole. But so these servo bodies can be adjusted or are, are usable for different sized blast gates. And tighten them down, make sure they're snug, replace the pivot and the nylox nut and then go ahead and tighten down that nylox nut. So you want that pivot to be able to turn. Um, I tightened it down basically until it kind of wouldn't turn and then just real quickly back it off until it spins freely. A little bit more. And then the whole assembly pivots up and down. You can see the movement in that arm that allows it to move. So here's all the finished blast gates ready for assembly. Real quick about the hub, there's three buttons on the front, 
a green button, a blue button, and a red button when they're lit. Uh, if I press that red button, it effectively locks out the entire system. That's a safety for the shop. Um, nobody can actuate any of the tools. It disallows the machine triggers from functioning or anything else. To turn that off, I just press the green button and you'll see it unlocks. That blue button in the center is a pairing button. It's how you get the other devices to pair into the hub. Press it once and it starts blinking. Press it once, turn it off. There's the antenna on the side, it needs to be oriented up. And on the left side, there's a small screen and below it a button. That is where you produce the QR code that gives you access to the app and the hub itself. So at this point, I've assembled all the blast gates into the system. In this small section of it, I'm using two inch ABS. Um, it's just the way the system is set up. That's why I have the smaller blast gates. I had to heat it up to get it to fit properly. These two inch rubber ABS adapters work great for dissimilar sized equipment. It makes it much easier to install. Um, they're not terribly cheap, but with dissimilar sized stuff, it's sometimes necessary. I have a thumb screw on this one. I'm gonna use it for a remote hose that goes to my miter saw that I wheel out when I use it. Uh, so these are all assembled. Four inch pipe. Uh, I use, I think it's schedule 20 sewer and drain pipe from Home Depot. It's inexpensive and so are the fittings. You'll notice how smooth it is inside. Uh, that's great for airflow. It's a really necessary thing. Uh, fits natively on blast gates. Yeah, I know that's a plastic blast gate, but it fits as well on aluminum. Kind of a pro tip, if you cut a small sliver of it, you can use it as a marking gauge uh, over the pipe and then use a Sharpie to draw your line, cut it so that you know things are square. That really helps when you're fitting the pieces together. Okay, low voltage wiring, um, solid core two strand wire. I have a set of wire strippers here. Um, from grit, you also get screwdriver and these quick connectors um, that plug into all the different parts and pieces. So we start by stripping back about an inch of the exterior casing of the wire. That shows us the two wires inside. There's a red and a white wire part those out and then strip back about a quarter inch off of each end. Um, you wanna make sure you have clean cuts there and that you don't separate the solid core wire because it is pretty thin. So I'm joining two wires together to make a daisy chain here. And so all I'm gonna do is grab the red wires and the white wires and hold them together. On the quick connectors, you want to make sure that you back off the screws um, all the way. That'll allow easy access to the ports. Notice there's a positive and a negative. You want to keep those aligned throughout the entire assembly. So here I'm uh, assembling the red wires into the positive port. And then I'll tighten them down. It's easiest if you back that screw all the way off to give yourself plenty of room easy to tighten it down but that way you're not fighting the, uh, the assembly. Check and make sure that each wire is seated fully and then bend over the white wires and insert them as well. Tighten those down and then this piece is done. So you need to build up a wiring plan, including how many devices you want to daisy chain together. I just wrap the wire around the pipes and then figure out where I wanted placement for each connection. Build in some strain relief as well. Once the wiring's in place, we're ready to pair the devices. Press the blue pairing button, it starts flashing. Notice the orientation of the quick connect and the built-in strain relief. Plug that wire into the servo body and it's powering the system, and you'll notice it'll flash green, and then the device has been paired. Once the device has been paired and added, you can go into the app and you'll see the generic gate on top of that stack. That's the new gate. If I select it, it'll open up its profile. I can scroll to the top and rename it. We're gonna call this router table. And when I've got that in, I just hit done, and then that arrow on the top left will take me back. With all the devices paired, I need to calibrate the gates. So I go into the app, select devices, and then select the gate that I want. In this case, it's the miter saw gate right there. I'm gonna select that, 
device. It's going to open up that same window and I'm going to hit calibrate. So the way this calibrates is you basically open and close the servo using these buttons. And then you micro adjust using the more open or less open button. And what you're looking for here is to play around with it until you get the gate max open, but without negatively affecting that arm. At some point it'll lock out and it starts to put back pressure on the servo. You don't want that. So when you hit that point, you need to back up. Just one or two touches is all you need. So there's a little bit of room there. And that's all she wrote. We'll do the same thing for the close. Close it a little bit more, close it a little bit more, close it a little bit more. Each of those taps is just closing it just a little bit. And you'll see the deflection right there. And then I back it off. And now it's properly calibrated. You can test it out. Hit open. It opens fully. Hit closed. It closes fully. I hit done and I'm done. If you notice weird activity from your system, it's probably that it's not calibrated properly. So here's a look at just the opening and closing of the gates manually. And I turn the lights off just because it's more impressive, but it actually shows you the function of the gates. And this is all just being done through the app, opening and closing individual gates. Next piece is the mag switch integration. Grit has assembly instructions. It's about six wires that you're just adding into the existing terminals and the buttons still work when it's installed. So with the gate actuators, switches, and the mag switch all installed and added, we can configure. Uh, inside the, the app itself, we can scroll down and find a trigger. In this case, we'll pull up the small bandsaw trigger and this gives you, the app gives you some flexibility in how you configure um, times on, how much amperage it's looking for, which uh, dust collector it's connected to if you have more than one. And then we can select which uh, gates we want to be associated with it. And when we select those gates, um, basically what it's going to do is it's going to say that when that switch goes active, open these gates and turn on this dust collector. So here's a couple of quick demonstrations. Um, this is for a remote hose that I use for cleanup. This is going to be activated by a manual switch, which is just off screen hidden under a table. It's going to ask this gate and this zone gate to open and turn on the dust collector. So if I walk over here and flip the switch, signals are sent, gates open, dust collector starts. If I flip that switch again, there's a four second delay to clear the lines and dust collector shuts down. So that's a manual switch. This is a machine switch. Uh, it's tied into my flat top sander and it's going to ask that gate and this zone gate to open. And you'll notice I have it set so that when you turn the machine on, the gates open, but there's a one second delay before the uh, dust collector starts. That's to give the gates time to open without pressure. It off, dust collector stops again. Uh, so this is a machine switch that I use for my miter saw and for another tool. So I have this the trigger right there and the gate right there, but they're not tied into anything right now. So I will manually configure this every time I use it, which isn't a big deal. I plug the hose in and tighten down the thumb screw just a little bit, and then plug into the machine switch. And when I Start the saw, it'll open up the gate, start the dust collector, and when I let off the saw switch, four seconds later, it'll shut off the dust collector. So that's a little bit about the GRIT product and how it goes together. Um, I've only been using it for a short amount of time, however, uh, after you get it tuned up and get things calibrated and, and get it all running, um, thus far it's been flawless. It's done exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, very impressed with it. Very happy with it. I look forward to seeing how it progresses within my shop. I know there's some other parts and pieces out there that are available. Um, but if you have any interest in this, I'd suggest you hit up Grit Automation and ask them questions. Um, maybe get a, a demo. I know they're putting out some videos. 
Um, they don't just do small shop stuff. In fact, a lot of their work to this point has been large shops, uh, industrial or educational. Um, they're involved with a couple of universities and their shops. So it's a very scalable uh, product, I think. And I think that it's really gonna up the game for my dust collection. It's definitely gonna make it more efficient and easier. And I appreciate the way it's put together, the ease and simplicity of use, and look forward to using it in the future. Um, I plan on doing another video in this series about this, the desk collection and automation. I'll probably tie it into um, a small shop update. Um, I haven't done one in a couple years and kind of give a tour of the shop and the things that I've changed over time. And that'll include a little bit more about the, uh, the Oneida Supercell and the, the grit automations, um, blast gates and other machine tool, uh, machine um, devices. Thanks for watching and I hope you stay safe in your shop. Have a good day.